All right, today we're going to talk about a branch of biology that's called taxonomy. And the picture that you see here is not really something that you need to draw out, but it's going to show you how things fit together. When scientists started finding all the different animals in the world, they started figuring out very quickly trying to name them and put them into categories is going to be very difficult. And so they had to come up with a way of naming things, scientific names, that would make it easier to understand what kind of animal that they were dealing with. As a matter of fact, scientists are still finding in many of the rainforests in the world all kinds of insects and birds that they've never seen before. So we had to come out with an organized way of naming things. That is what is called taxonomy. The basic diagram here, you start out with kingdoms and uh, phylum and class, order, family, and genus and species. Let me show you a little bit better way, but it's how we're going to classify life. Here's an example that came from a tax test, and you probably want the information on the right over here first, so I'm going to give you a second to pause and write those down. This is the way that we name the animals within the kingdoms. Kingdoms are going to be the broadest category, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Let me give you something that you know. Humans are called Homo sapiens. That's our genus and species. We're in the animal family. I'll show you that more specifically here in a second. But our genus and species, Homo sapiens, is the name that gives for human beings. Okay? Uh, if you've ever seen some of the pictures in which um, they show maybe cavemen and how they would look where, where they were walk around and they were more bent over and they couldn't stand all the way uh, up, their name was Homo erectus. The first ones to be able to stand up uh, that didn't seem to possibly be on all fours. And so we have different genus and species names. Now the question here asks, which of these classifications is the most specific? Well, from the answers that they gave you, family is here, genus is here, Phylum is up here in order. Well, the most specific is going to be closest to species, so the answer in this case is genus. A very simple question if you understand basic taxonomy. So I want to make sure and give you this diagram so that you see how they go together. Now let's start at the top and give you the basic information that you need to know. The very first thing you need to know is that there are six major kingdoms in the world. Now I'll give you a second to pause and write down all six. Anim animalia, fungi, plantae, protista, eubacteria, and archaebacteria. Give you a second to pause and copy this down. All right, now I'm going to give you a little bit more information on each of them, but let me go through them quickly. The animal kingdom are going to be the basic animals that we all know. That's why the pictures are here. And so if you didn't write down examples off to the side, you may want to do that. Fish, deer, birds, uh, amphibians, reptiles, that kind of thing. Fungi, basic fungus, like a mushroom. Athlete's foot would fall into fungi. Plants are obviously plants that we know, everything from cactuses to plants that we have in our home, trees, all of those kinds of things. Protista, eubacteria, and archaebacteria are going to be ones you're going to have a little bit more difficult with. I'm going to show you some specifics in a second to make that easier. So let's talk about each of the six kingdoms and what's included in each. Let's start with the animal kingdom. And just like I was doing, here are the basic things that you need to know about the animal kingdom. So you'll want to pause and jot these down. All right, these are going to be multicellular. They're going to have tons and tons of cells. Now we saw in the slide before where you had birds and deer and fish. Those are all things that are in the animal kingdom. These kingdoms include all vertebrates. That's a very important term. Make sure you have that. Those are things that have a backbone. And they're going to have the invertebrates as well, things that don't have a backbone. When you look at the examples here, jellyfish, for example, is an invertebrate. People are going to be vertebrates. These are the basic, basic parts of the animal kingdom. After the animal kingdom, we talk about plant kingdom. This is one of the largest ones. Let me give you a second to jot these down. Uh, 
Again, they're going to be multicellular. These are going to be easier because you know what plants are. They have lots and lots of cells. Autotrophic. Remember, they're going to make their own food. That falls into this category because of chlorophyll, which are going to be the chloroplasts, which are in each and every cell. That's why chlorophyll makes them green. They make their own food using sunlight. That, that means takes place because of photosynthesis, as it says right there. Everything from mosses to ferns, conifers, those are going to be like pine trees, Christmas trees, flowering plants, grasses, fruit trees, all kinds of plants. They all fit into the plant kingdom. That one's pretty easy. The next kingdom is kingdom fungi or fungus. Give you a second to jot these down. Now again, multicellular, they're made up of lots and lots of cells. And it says some are single cell. Well, I'm going to skip down. Here's an example of a single cell. Yeast that is used in breads is single cell, and, and that's an example of a fungus. Many of these organisms are decomposers. When something dies and starts to break down and fall apart, it's going to be the decomposers that actually break it down so that those nutrients go back into the soil. Examples, mushroom, athlete's foot, those kinds of things are all fungus. Pretty easy to understand. Now, we start getting into uh, these kingdom, other kingdoms. They're, they're a little more complex, so I'm going to go ahead and give you this information. Here's protista. Give me a second to pause it and jot this down. All right. In Kingdom Protista, they're the largest source of food and oxygen for the entire planet. These are going to be things like plankton. Now, what some of it, what we may not remember is we know that if we kill plants in the world, we're going to actually cut off the oxygen supply to the world. But most of the, the photosynthesis, that takes, photosynthesis that takes place takes place with plankton. They sit on top of the ocean. They absorb sunlight. And they're going to be a huge producer of oxygen for the world. So we don't want to contaminate the oceans. That would be a major problem to us. Described as eukaryotes, you'll notice they have an organized cell as we've talked about before. They fit into protista. Here's two more with a little bit of information about each. Kingdom bacteria and archaebacteria. I'll give you a second to jot these down as well. All right, kingdom bacteria, typically one cell, prokaryotes, remember they don't have a nucleus, they're very simplistic cells, but they're often decomposers. They break down things. In one of the earlier sessions, we talked about bacteria that live in the human gut. When we eat our food in our intestines, there's bacteria that help us finish breaking down our food to get all the nutrients out. Archaebacteria are going to be ones that are found in extreme environments. Scientists that have found that in uh, hot springs, there are actually bacteria that live in that really, really hot water. Uh, they've also found in places where there are sulfur springs, for example. They have lots and lots of sulfur, and it's really strong smelling. There's actually bacteria that live in those extreme environments, such as very cold environments. We find those bacteria as well. Archaebacteria are the ones found in the very extreme, extreme environments.